Your Excellency, sir, the Commissioner of Insurance, the President of the Insurance Association, insurance representatives, ladies and gentlemen. It has pleased Your Excellency to receive the insurance family on its request to register their congratulatory courtesies following Your Excellency's resounding second mandate. On that note, Your Excellency, it gives me pleasure to invite Mr. Akoyaski, Commissioner of Insurance, to make a statement. Thank you very much. Hold on, please just stand up and wave to just excellence so you bow. Mr. Rumon Makoli, Managing Director of Rural Insurance Company, President of the Civil Insurance Association. Mr. Abiola Ekudayo, Managing Director of Waika Reinsurance Corporation. Mr. Sheku Matia, Deputy Commissioner of Insurance, Civil Insurance Association. Mr. Abdul Kabo, Managing Director of National Insurance Company. Ambassador Ali Bamura, Executive Chairman of Civil Insurance Co uh, Company. Mr. Mohamed Smart, General Manager, Marine and General Insurance Company. Mr. Madi CC, uh, Technical Director of Civil Insurance Commission. Mr. Daniel CC, of Capital Insurance Company, Emmanuel Omotesi, Omote, the Finance Director of um, Stacco Insurance Company, Solomon CC, Managing Director of Reliance Trust Corporation, uh, Mr. Mathias Karim, Compliance Director of, at Civil Insurance uh, Commission, Bensi Unku. Oku Yamuju. Yamuju is the uh, Chief Operations Officer of uh, International Insurance Company. Alaji Almani Uro um, of IIC, International Insurance Company. Ishmael Bishi Kanu, Executive Chairman of Transworld Insurance Company. Paul Opara, Manager of Global Risk. Uh, Mr. Festos, I will manage the director of Activa Insurance Company and my home is that Atoyaski, Commissioner of Insurance. Your Excellency and all other protocols observed here, we are here today to extend our warmest congratulations to you on your re-election re as our president and head of state. Your resounding victory is a testament to the trust and confidence that the people of our country have in your leadership. We are confident that under your guidance, our country will continue to prosper, thrive, and develop. Your Excellency, we would also like to take this opportunity to thank you for your unwavering commitment to the welfare and well-being of us all, the citizens. Your dedication, commitment and hard work have not gone unnoticed by our industry. We recall that when you decided for our country to have a new airport, we are involved in arranging the insurance cover for the construction of the said airport. We are very grateful for all that you do. We are all excited about the inclusion of young people and a large number of women in the cabinet. We look forward to the actualization of the Big Five agenda. We shall endeavor to take advantage of the opportunities they will provide in the economy. We are very confident that they will positively impact on our operations, especially as we, intended, as we intend to start underwriting agriculture insurance very, very soon. We wish to take this opportunity to thank you for your support in our efforts to digitalize a motor insurance database in this country. Also, the voting, how the voting went, peacefully, without any hindrance or intimidation. The elections were indeed free and fair, and they clearly reflected the will of our people. 
it is not all the time we have the opportunity to have an interface with you, Your Excellency. Consequently, we would like to take this opportunity to mention the construction of our head office building. The construction of that building started way back in 2011. It is now 65% complete. We wish to thank you again for your government support in getting it to that 65%. However, I wish to use this opportunity to appeal to you, Your Excellency, that all efforts be made to complete the same building. Your Excellency, on the completion of that building, we are willing to rent at least two floors to house any one or two government ministries or agencies of government. We also wish to take this opportunity to inform you that we shall be hosting two international conferences in this year. Firstly, the Zuna meeting of the ECOWAS Brown Card in September yeah. and the Educational Conference of the West African Insurance Companies Association in November. We are working with the Minister of Finance to make these conferences a big, a huge su success. Once again, congratulations on your uh, re-election. May you continue to lead our nation with wisdom, courage and compassion. God bless you and God bless our country. Thank you very much, Commissioner Yaski. I now have the pleasure of inviting the President of SLI, Mr. Mamadou. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, colleagues, and the Chinese President, on behalf of the Central Asian Association, I want to say thank you. And on behalf of the association, let me also congratulate you for the reflection as president of this country. And that we hope that in the next five years, we will see growth of the economy, especially at the culture, which is a flagship project. Us as insurance, when there is growth and development in the sector, we provide security for risk and then We also um, want to see improvement in climate change, which is also an integral part of the project of your um, program. Because I'm already as insurance started seeing the effect because um, during the rains we have fields for more and even the um, marine plants um, boats catching from the ankle and then eating rocks. So we know that um, climate change um, we manage it well it means that that will minimize our exposure to risk. Um, as an industry Probably the commissioner might have mentioned it. Um, we intend to introduce multi insurance database, which is digitized the operations of multi insurance. It means that from the comfort of your office or your house, um, we can access insurance. Insurance, and we can also uh, detect vehicles that are. Not in short, or do not have the requisite um, requirement to fly the route. Because when we have punching the registration number, we need to know whether that becomes um, has valid insurance. So um, that will come into fusion shortly. We are also, as he mentioned, the conferences that are coming. But finally, before I close, um, we want to thank you for. Maintaining the liberalization industry where there is the Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Macaulay. May it not please Your Excellency, most gracious Mr. Thank you very much. Uh, and good afternoon to 
each and every one of you for coming over today to congratulate me. Thank you for the consideration and um, I take this very seriously because uh, you play an important part in the economy and um, we want you to take your role very seriously as we embark on another part of their journey, which is the second half of my own leadership. Uh, quite a lot has been done in the first term as a government and uh, what we want to do is to consolidate those gains and to be able to do more. As we are all aware, especially as um, uh, people from the insurance world, it's been tough for the past five years. The economies have, have had to face serious shocks, externally driven. Uh, COVID has, uh, has, has taken its toll. The Ukraine war is continuing to see hammer us. Yes, we can feel the pinch, but we are still making progress. We have registered serious progress in the area of human capital development, but we stand in the many hurdles. We have registered uh, as a nation that is serious about itself, its image, and therefore we are now part of the UN Security Council, where we are able to get the support of 188 out of 192 to gain a seat in the UN Security Council. Uh, we have also reduced uh, maternal mortality by 60%. We have increased life expectancy from 53 to 61. More kids are in school today. More guys um, are completing um, 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 basic education in Sierra Leone than anywhere else in West Africa. The pass rate has increased. Of course, we have um, put a check on cheating in schools to, 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 to pass uh, transition exams. So quite a lot has happened in the past five years. And I want to encourage us all to support because it takes me and my government to originate, to formulate the, the policies and try to put them on. But it takes you too to, to have a buy-in into that for us to succeed. As we start another um, five-year term, I want to encourage each and every one of us that we cannot prosper in the 21st century if we don't have sound education. You are here because you have something in your head. We need to stuff our children's head better than we are today because what we know is not what they need to know to, to prosper. To navigate an extremely difficult world in the 21st century, they need to have new ideas. We are talking about digitalizing the motor insurance uh, uh, scheme. That is the world they are going to live in. They are not going to be doing Greek and Roman history. They are going to live in, in a world that's completely different from ours. And for me, my, that is where my attention has been. How do we prepare our own kids to be pre-positioned, not to be at the receiving end of the fourth industrial revolution, which is looming? It takes us all as a community, as a society, as a nation to do that. There are too many hurdles. The, the challenges are many, but we are not going to throw our hearts in. We are not going to give up. We are going to stand up to these challenges, overcome them, and triumph at the end. That is the only way we can make progress. So I'm heartened by your move today to come and congratulate me and also through a message of support. And I want you to support by the many activities, the things that you do, everybody is supporting each short term. The support you give to businesses, especially as we embark on agriculture, we have all seen how the world can be tough and how we can be selfish in um, the global village. When we had COVID here, everybody the, the, the richer world had vaccines and they were giving themselves three, four, five shots 
when we could hardly get one. But we were able to survive, fortunately for us, because God made us of uh, standard stuff. That's the only that's the only reason why we are able to survive it. Uh, they thought that we are going to be picking cups all over, but we are alive. One thing is missing. We cannot feed ourselves. We have to import rice. We have no business importing rice. We have no the other day they were grumbling about we are grumbling about onion. For me, in as much as I we pay attention to it, but I can go without onions for as long as possible. But we can grow onions here. It's been done. We just need to take it to scale. So why do we throw the little hard currency we earn just to bring in that which we can grow here? We used to be an exporter of rice. Now we are a net importer of rice. This is not done. So I am encouraging each and every one of us, with me leading, to, to be engaged in some form of agriculture, to encourage, to support, uh, like you said, the, 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 the um, scheme you want to establish to support uh, those engaged in agriculture. We need you there too. Uh, there are times when they, their crops will go bad and they need to get back on their feet the following year to, to continue. So, as somebody getting in the second term, I know I need the support of each and every one of us here. I can't do it alone as a national project and uh, for huge projects like this to succeed. I need to have your buy-in. So as you come to congratulate me, my challenge to you is buy into the programs that we have set. First one is feed salon. We should be able to feed ourselves. Especially when you talk about feeding in Syria, it's about rice. Once there is rice, every other thing can go. The other condiments, and they will always come around. Then the next thing is we want to be able to create employment. This uh, gentleman, the, 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 there are no ladies here. This is serious. This is serious. This is an indictment, the insurance world. Uh, the women are going to come at you. Uh, when you see this picture in the, in the TV today, uh, the gender ministry is going to come to you. Trying to have some women. I know the, the last time there were women. Today you didn't invite them. <laughs> some have retired. Some have retired. There should be still, still some remaining with you. Yes, um, so um, my, my goal is to be able to inspire, especially the young people. We have a youth bulge, not only in Syria, in the whole of Africa. It can be a blessing if we support them, if we invest in them. If we do not, they are the majority and they have a lot of energy. And when those energies are not properly directed, they can disrupt your functions. Yes, that is the truth about it. And our children go to school, they come out, they work very hard, come out with very good degrees. Thousands are coming out now from the universities. We have moved from about 35,000 the previous year. Last year we had 115,000 that had clear passes for our university. We have gone in and they are going to come out very soon. We, <laughs> how do we expand our economy to be able to absorb? How can we help them to be entrepreneurial, like most of you are, so that you don't only employ yourself, you have employed other people, hundreds. So we have a lot to do as a society. And the more I look at the enormity of that task, I know I need each and every one of us in our own little ways, in little corners, to do what we have to do to support the nation. So we are talking about youth employment schemes to be able to take 
as many as we can. And this is where even the agricultural productivity we are trying to enhance comes into play. Because with agriculture, we can employ as many people as possible. Yes, we want to make a nice to a certain level, but if you take uh, a lot of our young men up the streets to be engaged in productive activities. So, um, employment is another thing that we've taken very seriously. For all of you who interact and interface with government, we have to deliver. We have to do certain things for you to function very well. That machine, the public sector, the civil service, has to be properly tuned up to be able to respond to the needs of society. That is another thing that we have, re we have realized that the engine of the state, which is the public service, we are politicians to come and go, but that engine needs to be tuned, properly tuned to respond to the many uh, deliverables that uh, government has to deliver to the people of this country. So that's why we are, we are undertaking that this time round. We also, of course, we know the essence of infrastructure and uh, technology. We, you can't avoid them today at all. They form the basis for everything that we do, whether even the digital infrastructure to be able to beam classes into uh, the, the, the last mile of this country. We should be able to deliver like um, I think the, 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 the president of the association was saying, we should be able to sit in our houses and do quite a lot of things, or in your office and do quite a lot of things without having to get up, you apply, you know, and do things as it's been done elsewhere in the world. That kid in Falaba or Solima or Kailan should be able to access the same information that kids in Frita and access very easily. So again, when we talk about infrastructure, it's not just the physical infrastructure, but the digital infrastructure. It has to be there because we have to ride on it to be able to deliver e-health, education, um, um, health, and many other services that we can um, um, use the digital platform for. So there's quite a lot that we are embarking on, and they have been we have been very intentional in picking up the big five because we do, so if we do them very well, it will take us to higher heights. We are already considered a champion for women's uh, empowerment in, 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 the, in the world. We are already considered um, a champion for education. Um, I am one of five champions in the world appointed by the UN Secretary General for foundational learning. Um, Sierra Leone is considered uh, to be one of those countries that has liberalized the political space. The, removing the death penalty is one big thing that nobody thought anybody, a politician, would do. We are still moving so many years after we removed it. We have removed, we have cleared the, 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 um, the um, uh, 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 libel laws that restricted journalists and uh, everybody was uh, scared of touching that for nearly 50 years, but we are still going strong, which means we have the ability in this country to deliver, to redeem this nation. I normally say we still eat in this mess ourselves. Let's retrieve it. And that is why I invite all of you to join me because I can't do it alone. We created a mess together. Let's work together to retrieve our nation. Thank you.